Hi everybody and welcome to part three of making an ocean aquarium bead. In this section I am going to be covering seaweed placement and barnacles and marini that are inside the bead. Um, we also do this on the outside at the end if you wish but that's what this section covers are the inner sections. So after part two in which I placed my anemone, I am going to place some seaweed. And how I place these on is I just wiggle them on. I wiggle back and forth and down to the bottom. And I usually use uh, two big leaves together to make one little seaweed section. And then I heat the bottom and pull the two to a point. So they're actually joined at the bottom. After I placed them on the bead, I want to make little indents so that they have little uh, jaggedy ridges to them to make them seem a little more seaweedish. You don't have to do this, of course, but this is just how I do it. And so I go all the way up, putting little indents in with my X-Acto blade. And after these are done, I am going to encase these. So every time you add an element, you want to make sure it's encased before you go to the next section. So there's the little jaggedy lines on my seaweed. And so now I'm going to encase these two. Make sure you keep the rest of the bead warm. And I'm just going from the bottom up to the top, covering that whole line of seaweed there. And then I'm going to cover the other section. So make sure they're totally encased. And so I'm just going to flatten those down a little bit. And I sped up this video because you really don't need to see all this melting in. But I'm just flattening it down to make sure everything is totally covered and spreading it out a little bit because the clear was a little raised up there. Melting it in. And then I have my little seaweeds in case there. And now I'm going to place some marini pieces. And so these are my little, uh, this one is my little barnacle stringer that I cut little chips off of into marini. And you could just place these. It probably would have been better if I actually had a base color of some sort, like a gray or something, like it, if it was a rock outcropping. Um, but I just placed these on top of the clear. And this is basically just to show how you can place marini in your bead. And so I have three different marinis there. Uh, I have one like uh, star marini, star circle marini. And then I have a flower marini, and then I have the marini that I made for the barnacles. And so I'm just placing these three marini in here. And so you could place as many as you want. It depends on how many you want. And they can be long or short. It depends on if you want them all an even height in your bead or not. And so I'm placing these. I'm having them face upward a little bit. So it looks like they're coming out and up towards the sun, figuring that the bottom of the bead is the bottom of the ocean. And so now I'm doing spot encasing again, and I'm going around all these marini and in between the marini, and placing all this clear around so the marini will stay raised inside the bead. And this was just a little example to show you um, I would have, like I said, I would have put um, a, some kind of color background on the bottom um, if I really wanted this to look like, you know, coral or tube worms or what have you that comes out uh, from the bottom of the ocean. I would have put a base background of some sort on there. But I just put these, they're kind of like floating in nothing in the in the middle of the water or something 
but it was just to basically to show you how to place these kind of marini that you want to stick out. So you want to make sure you encase all around them and then on top of them. And so you have this little kind of bubble section with marini sticking out. And so there's kind of a zoom in shot. It's still kind of glowing. It's hard to see. But they're like three dimensional in there. And then I'm going to place some actual pieces of uh, marini for like the starfish or the dolphin. But first I want to actually add a little more clear around the rest of my background so that the background is separated because right now that's just the straight blue background. And I want to put some clear on there to make it seem like there's water in between the background and the marini I place. And so I'm encasing the rest of the bead with clear and I'm going to melt that in first. And then I'll place a couple of uh, star marini or starfish marini, whatever you want to call it. I was going to place, and here I pick it up, my little dolphin marini. I was kind of excited about that and it ended up cracking right there in the flame. So it broke in half so I couldn't use it. But basically it's placed the same way as long as it doesn't crack and so I'm going to actually place a couple of star marinis in here. And so for these beads I want to push them down as much as possible. So I heat a really nice spot, really hot, and I push that marini down as much as I possibly can so that I don't have any distortion when I actually go to encase it. I don't want it to spread out or shrink down. So I want it to stay that star shape and nice and sharp. And so I try to push it down as much as I can into the bead when I first place it. So then the, the shape stays nice and crisp. And so I add clear to cover the top and I kind of help it smoosh down a little bit so it gets flush with the rest of the clear. And I'm going to place a second star. So just figure out where you want to place your marini. You could put a bunch of marini. You could put just one if you want. And I heat it a little bit in the background just so it won't shock when it goes into your bead. And then you want to spot heat the area you're going to place it in super hot and then push it down as much as you can into the bead. This one was a little higher to start off with you could see there but not too much sticking out. And I also like to use thinner slices of marini for these beads because I just want the shape. I don't want it to actually balloon out or shrink down and distort um, if it melts at all. So I try to use thinner slices of marini. And if you have marini you purchased, um, some longer ones, you can actually slice them in half to make them skinnier yourself. So if you want to do that. And so I'm just going to melt that glass down heat up the whole bead, keep it nice and toasty for the next step. And I think I'll have a close-up pretty soon. And so here's the bead so far. Oh, you can see that star is glowing a whole bunch there. And there's the other star and the little tube marinies. And that's it for this section. Thanks so much for watching.